This video will review the terms operators, observables, eigenfunctions, and eigenvalues. We'll use these terms a lot over the course of quantum mechanics, so it's helpful to make sure you have a good definition of these terms in your mind. So we'll start with operators. And operators are simply anything you do to a function. So right here on the screen, I've listed a few different operators. And we can operate on a function. So let's say our function is sine of 2x. We can operate on sine of 2x with all of these various operators, and we'll get different functions as a result. So if we operate on our function f with operator a, we simply multiply x with sine of 2x, end up with x sine 2x. We can operate with operator b, and it'll be the same thing. We'll get, uh, we just multiply and we'll get 3x squared sine 2x. You know, in some cases, our operators might have uh, additions or multiple terms in them. In this case, we simply apply each term to our function. So if our operator c is e to the x plus 1, and we operate of our, on our function sine of 2x, we end up with e to the x sine of 2x plus sine of 2x. We just operate on both terms, just carry through like you would in algebra. Operators can also be derivatives or integrals. So if our operator d is a derivative, we take the derivative of our function sine of 2x, and that will give us 2 cosine of 2x. And finally, uh, we'll have operator e here, which is 2 uh, derivatives and multiplied by minus 1. So I'll take two derivatives of sine of 2x, which is going to be a negative, uh, or negative 4 sine of 2x. And then that's negative as of our operator e. So our final answer will be 4 sine of 2x. All right, so you can see we can do any sort of operators on any sort of function. And we typically get a different uh, answer out for each one, a different kind of function. However, some operators, when operating on certain functions, will generate a function multiplied by a constant. So we can see here for operator e, that sine of 2x is our original function. So when we did operator e on our function sine of 2x, we ended up with 4 times our original function. Now, this is a special kind of, of function and operator relationship. So this function, in this case sine of 2x, is said to be an eigenfunction of our operator e. And this 4 that comes out, uh, this constant that comes out, is the eigenvalue. So in general, a function is an eigenfunction of an operator. So here if we have operator uh, uh, A, so just an arbitrary operator, and we operate on some function, uh, that will return a constant. We're going to note that here as little a times that function again. So if this is the case, this gives you an eigenfunction, which is our function here, and then an eigenvalue, which is the constant that comes out. Uh, and typically, there are going to be many different eigenfunction solutions for a given operator. So for our operator uh, e here, we saw that our function uh, sine of 2x was an eigenfunction. But you know what else would be an eigenfunction? Well, sine of x or sine of 3x. And any sort of sine functions or sine and cosine or sum of sines and cosines would be an eigenfunction of this operator. Because when you take two derivatives of a sine or a cosine function, you return a sine or cosine function multiplied by a constant. So these, uh, there are many different eigenfunctions here of our operator E. Now they have some unique properties. <clears throat> so one of the unique properties of eigenfunctions is that they are normalized, or sorry, that they are orthogonal. We'll talk about normalization next. So uh, orthogonality in terms of functions means that if we integrate over all space that we're interested in, so typically this would be from negative infinity to infinity. But if we're working with, say, the particle in a box, it would just be the box length from 0 to a. But if we integrate from all space that we're interested in of the complex conjugate of one of our eigenfunctions times a second eigenfunction, uh, and we integrate over that, since they're orthogonal, that means this integral is 0. This is a unique property of eigenfunctions that will be used often in quantum mechanics. Um, the last thing I mentioned, so let me write orthogonal. Uh, the last thing I mentioned is normalized, and this is another similar property uh, of eigenfunctions, is that when you integrate, again, over all space, but this time when you're integrating the function, uh, the complex conjugate of the function times itself, this gives you uh, 1. Now, this is not something that's inherent to eigenfunctions, 
but we will normalize the eigenfunctions to make this true. We do that simply by dividing by some constant such that we get a value equal to one. And this is because in quantum mechanics, we want to use our eigenfunctions to make uh, probability claims on certain physical systems. So the probability has to equal one. Uh, the last thing I haven't mentioned is observables. So an observable, it corresponds to something that you would measure in the lab. Uh, so in this case, an operator corresponds to a measurement you would do in the lab, and the observable corresponds to what you would, uh, the value you would get out. In this case, in quantum mechanics, when you make uh, when you make a measurement in a lab, that's equivalent to our quantum mechanical math of performing uh, an operation using an operator on some wave function. And when you operate on the wave function, what you'll get is a collapse of the wave function into one of the eigenfunctions. And so the observables that you'll get are always eigenvalues of the eigenfunctions. So I hope that helps. Um, Remember that we're using here these various terms, and it's good to get a grasp on these terms because they'll come up in reading and in lecture. Uh, so it's important that you're able to distinguish between what an operator and an eigenfunction and an eigenvalue and all these various things.